So hi everyone, thank you for coming on Alpha. I am a Bottle and Clayworks resident artist, and this is my expo talk. So I'm not only going to be sharing with you kind of um, how I got here and my progression from being a student and an intern to a resident artist, but all these other fun things like my inspiration and definitely um, people who inspire me um, in the art. So without further ado, welcome and let's come inside. So um, my mom, I just wanted to preface this with how she's a huge inspiration of mine. So growing up, um, at one point, things were a little bit rocky and we were working at H Mark making kimchi. We were kimchi girls. And um, with her tax returns, she would take me traveling all over the world. So I developed um, from a young age, like a love for just excitement and travel. And a lot of the artwork and the historic places we went to, like the pyramids in Egypt, for example, really gave me um, like, these amazing memories about how, like thinking about things historically um, and archeologically, like how much weight they carry um, and how much, how iconic they can be over time. Uh, my mom also ran five miles a day to Christina Aguilera. So I would like to thank her for this energy that I have today and shout out to Christina Aguilera because that person's amazing. And so just a little bit about where I'm from. So I'm from Glenville, Illinois. I started out doing a lot of photography as a teenager. And if not a lot of people know where Glenville, Illinois is, it is the North Shore, the, you know, uh, North kind of Northern suburbs of Chicago. So if anyone has watched Mean Girls or Ferris Bueller's Day Out, um, these high schools, um, Mean Girls with based on one of my high schools, I think the high school that I went to, but Ferris Bueller's Day Out was shot um, at our rival high school, GBN. So that's where I'm from. Uh, this is my brother and I on the bottom. Um, the bottom right is just my mom, my brother and I in the condo we lived in. And my grandparents from Spain and Peru are on the bottom left. Love all these people. So um, I, came to MICA with a, I'm a graduate of 2020. So I'm a, an alum from this past year. And one of my first mentors was Raul Middleman. This guy was the best. He, this is my first studio. This was my first studio assistantship in Baltimore. And he really taught me how to like fall in love with craft um, or the act of making and the lifestyle driven with making. And um, I just really got to see from my first year at art school uh, what it was like to balance an art practice in the family and also how to not follow the rules but still follow them. Um, this guy, he, I put a car here because he taught me how to parallel park, but um, he really taught me how to really use my hands and my body um, when painting and being very sculptural. So this was kind of my first experience with going from 2D to a kind of more sculptural experience. And one of my second mentors who I love a lot, who really helped me develop, um, again, like just really fall in love with craft and the whole kind of experience of being in a studio, a community studio is Ken Martin. And um, you can see with the, some of the artwork that the artists that he showed me or introduced me to, like Martin Currier and Matthias um, Splessing, was that you could be like very sweet and almost like humanoid and um, make these almost like endearing characters um, with these very formal kind of methods like steam bending. And so I really just fell in love with being in a community studio. And for the longest time, I thought that I would be, you know, a woodworker. Um, that's where I saw my future in a wood shop. But then, so I'm going to kind of be shouting at a lot of my mentors here. I met Audrey Kurian, and this class kind of changed my life into the newer genres. Um, not going to go too much into my undergrad experience, but uh, across the wood shop was a ceramic studio. So I would just, I went in one day and I sculpted elements of this uh, large scale wood piece. Um, with clay and then from then forward I fell in love with it so deeply that I changed my major. 
So that was in 2018. So this is where I started. These were the first couple pieces that I made in ceramics. My dog, Charlie, is my best friend. So he's always in the studio with me and has been since we started this beautiful journey together. So you can see here some of my early pieces and kind of my studio jam life. Um, I was a work study in our exhibitions department. So I had a lot of experience helping install and just upkeep galleries as I was um, in my undergrad. And the literally the minute I got out of my first hand building class um, at MICA is when I was told to go to Baltimore Clayworks and see if they had any internships available so I can continue learning about the practice and the craft. And that's exactly what I did. So this is my first year at Clayworks. Um, my BFFs, all of these uh, young students on top were really lovely kids I got to work with and just kind of share my uh, almost like soulmate like experience meeting Clay with. So I show them um, a lot of methods, was able to keep them company and um, just chill with them as the instructor taught and led these classes. So this was me as an intern. And what's really cool is that Nicole Falls was able to hook me up with a lot of community art projects on top of that. So I worked here with, um, if this is art every day, and I helped Western High School install the Dove Mosaic project um, onto their building. And you can actually see it on your drive here if you go up Falls Road. So this was really fun. Um, working with all these cool kids. And if you didn't know, um, so Western High School is the oldest all girls high school in the country. And on the bottom right um, is the first community arts teacher that I was able to work with. She's my mentor, my best friend. We got coffee this morning, that's Teresa. So this was my introduction to Clayworks. Here are a couple of classes. Um, so literally right out of, um, or right as I began working with Clay, I had the most amazing opportunity to teach Clay as well to our kids' classes. And on top of that, I was hustling, working for different, um, just like uh, short film directors and music video directors, um, just production assisting for different sets. So it would literally be uh, set photographing or set photographing, um, you know, behind the scene shooting these super cool rappers and their music videos, and then going back to the studio and teaching all these kids um, and just really having a blast meeting so many beautiful people. And one thing that I really love to stress when I'm working with any students of any age is to just do it and to just really feel free and liberated to make work and express yourself because it's something I wish I learned a lot sooner. Um, so yeah, ceramics is a gift. It brings out the best in people. And here's another shot of me working um, or some of my photographs from working on these awesome music video sets and me at class. So me in the studio and then me at the, or at the MICA studio and then me uh, and my students in the Baltimore Clayworks studio doing play after school. So it was just a lot of running around. And at school was when I went my first mentor ever, Victoria Jane. And what I really love about her is that she taught me how to um, be very kind of how to balance the fine art between being like fun and whimsical, but also um, really evaluating and being critical about what I want to say with my work. Because um, I feel sometimes I would get too, I would go so into the making process that it would take almost too much for me to step back and then evaluate everything. So she was definitely my rock and helped me kind of streamline and focus um, from being a student to an alum. So she is the best person in the whole world. Um, she's not only my mentor and I'm just so lucky to have met her um, as a young ceramicist and you know, someone who is up and coming and just trying to make this their entire life. So um, working for her was really cool. We would watch a lot of YouTube and just put hair into her pieces or glaze them endlessly. So she taught me a lot about the insane ways you can surface a piece and it inspired me to be that creative. 
Um, I had another really cool opportunity to work under Andrea Keith Connell um, as a university fellow. And she taught me so much about building large and armatures and whatnot. And I just really wanted to mention her before you know, I talk further about my work. And so um, after I came back from that uh, fellowship, I was literally going right back into the Baltimore Claywork studio and teaching. So here are some of the summer camp students and the surfacing that I did with them. And so essentially why I'm showing you all of this is because my practice goes beyond my studio. And so this is kind of a background of what encapsulates all this energy. Um, these kids mean a lot to me and working at Clayworks means so much to me. And so I wanted to show you all of these. And now we're going to get into my work. So these are one of the first pieces that um, I feel like made me get a good stride into um, not only thinking about ceramics professionally, but just thinking about how I can push boundaries and really mix traditional surfacing methods with more like cold surfacing methods. And by cold surfacing, I just mean, you know, finishing a piece without glaze. And so in this case, I wanted to show you all and if this leads to a sponsorship, maybe that would be amazing. Um, but so the Krylon Stone Coarse Texture Charcoal Sand Spray Paint is my favorite. And I use this to uh, surface pieces. She just really taught me that, you know, this, this kind of practice and this act of making, you never get a solid answer, but you get closer and closer to, you know, searching for this clarity and attaining that through building more and more. So this was what I ended up with as my thesis. So because of COVID, I did a lot of Photoshop and I was able to, um, finish the pieces that I had. Luckily, I did. A, I had a lot of cold surfacing experience. So I was able to finish them and document them and kind of turn them into these collages where um, I was able to put these work in a virtual environment. I also did some screen printing or some, um, in this case, um, what, does, what is it called? Um, Resograph printing. So I, documented my work uh, while it was um, actually in its greenware stage. And then I transferred that onto um, a resograph printer and it printed these, the, the picture on the left, Future Faux, into this um, really hyper visual 2D uh, format. And so that is a little preface about that term, uh, that photo and a little description about it. Let's see. But so yeah. Um, is that frozen, but okay, cool. So with all of this being said, um, Clay and people me are like best friends. And I think Clay brings the best out of people. And um, it's just so historically potent and iconic. And I think that a lot of people's lives are just so much better with a little bit of Clay. In it. Here's some uh, insane, okay. So this is what's inside my brain. I'm super inspired by um, just cartoons and um, illustrations from the early 2000s generation of like Cartoon Network. Um, my work is definitely influenced by these kind of forms and the freedom to create whatever you want in a virtual environment like this. But the whole reason I left doing illustration was because I wanted something a little more. I wanted to uh, be able to sit next to or stand next to one of my uh, sculptures essentially you know, hybrids of these, all these cultural, you know, elements, um, different cartoons I grew up with when I went to my grandma's house in Korea. And when I was um, up all night at my mom's house, um, watching MTV at 1 a.m., like all these different experiences have amalgamated into my current practice now. And upon further inspection, when I kind of sit with my work, another thing that I realized is that there was a lot of ceramics in my life and a lot of art um, that I didn't want to admit, you know, that I had. 
So my grandma had a lot of porcelain figures um, that she really loved. My grandma from Spain. And we had this little china cabinet with them. And we would just go to the mall, go to the, there was like a ceramic porcelain stand. And my dad and I would always pick one up, like a random one and give it to her. Um, and then my grandpa, on the other hand, he always had these relics, um, these little artifacts from Peru because that's where he's from. And I just took them for granted, but looking back, like these kind of forms, and especially the um, the hohe masks that my Korean grandparents actually gifted to my um, to these the, to this set of grandparents, like I just didn't realize how much of like this cultural exchange was happening. And these eyes on these masks are definitely huge influences for me on how I craft my work. So here's one of the first shows that I had as a resident artist at Playworks. It was called Pink Mountain, and it was my version of heaven um, with all these fun characters floating around and definitely a lot of printmaking as I collaged further my works onto these digital kind of poster formats. And a little bit about those, they were definitely inspired by North Korean propaganda because um, I do have a family history and um, just like lineage with that country as well. And so when um, an artist has so many different cultural backgrounds like that, I feel like it could be kind of confusing to navigate. But for me, this is the most meaningful way and the most fun way to kind of figure that out. And I think that's the most fun thing about life in general. Like you're always gonna be figuring something out, but why not do it with a smile and um, some play? So after uh, that show, actually when I, I installed that show at like one or two in the morning, I had the opening. And then the very next morning at 5 a.m. I drove to Christina Cordova. So um, definitely, because of COVID, it taught me a lot about how to reach out and I guess just, you know, form online friendships a lot more, or to, to take them a lot more seriously. And so I reached out to her saying, I know it's COVID, um, but I'm really looking for mentorship and building large. I don't want this into any way inhabit me, inhibit me from um, my practice. And like, if there's, if you have time for a Zoom call, I would love to work with you. And that turned into an internship. Um, so I'm very grateful that I was able to work under her, learn under her, and it ultimately brings me to what I'm doing now. So uh, as a resident at Clayworks, I'm teaching a bodybuilders club, which is an adult figure sculpture club. And as I do that, I invite my students to my studio and see how I build my work as well. So on the bottom right is uh, one of my pieces that I'm currently working on, and definitely um, Having that internship with Christina helped me, I guess, attain just a lot of confidence and assurance that, you know, building large is hard, but you can do it no matter where you are. You don't really need the kilns. You just have to be in love and confident with ceramics and things will turn out. I think that's one of the biggest life lessons that I learned. You know, you're in a studio, life is okay. And even if you don't have um, a studio at the moment, you can build at home. Like I was building these things at home for the longest time and like not firing them. So um, I think it's just that act of building, building uh, these things that kind of tower you or who can kind of befriend you in a way that I'm trying to share through these classes. Um, I'm also doing a lot of community arts work. Um, Nicole Falls invited me to give a tour to the Blind Industries of Maryland folks. And I, would, I walked them through last week, actually, a lot of the pieces in our gallery and was able to just hold pieces along with them and describe them. Um, and that was a really cool experience. And I'm also currently working on a um, mosaic with Art Access. And we're going to be installing our mosaics, me and a bunch of these super awesome children, um, and around April. But so, um, yes, teaching community arts. Uh, this is my children's class that I also, you know, want to hype up a lot because these kids are so cool. Um, the last class is, this is the last class that we had. Uh, it was about two weeks ago. And so I helped them using Jenny Gian Lee's DIY sculpture recipe. I 
um, got a bunch of flour and salt and we got some tempera paint and we made a bunch of clay for them to take home because I told them, you guys are not going to stop here. Trust me. I'm going to make you some clay to take home. You're going to work with this. And that is the little, I, I just really hope that they love that and um, just wanted to show everyone how awesome they are. So um, yeah, what's next for me? What's going on? Well, I've decided I'm going to move to Korea and take care of my grandparents. I love them so much. You know, with COVID, um, you don't. I at least took um, my practice for granted and just my family for granted, and I really separated the two and didn't put a lot of time into like maintaining just relationships with my family. I was just so kind of just tunnel visioned in the studio. And it made me realize that like, you can have a practice and care for the people that you love. So boom, I'm doing that. I told Clayworks that I love them so much. And you know, the past three years being a, a intern an instructor and now a resident at this ceramics facility was amazing. And honestly, it was, the, these years have been the most beautiful years that I've ever had. Um, definitely it was insane having this, you know, relationship with ceramics happened so fast, but it, I've just met so many beautiful people. I'm getting a little emotional because it's just all kind of, you know, just like hitting me that I am leaving in six months, but uh, I'm hoping to go to the Andong Mass Festival. And I think if you look at my work and see these traditional Korean masks, you can see this kind of relationship where they're pretty emotional, um, very emotive, but like also they have these caricature like qualities. And so I'm going to go under some deep investigating while I'm there and kind of figure out what it is that I want to make, where I want to go with my work um, and have. I don't see myself slowing down unless I get hit by a truck. Shout out to Patty Warshina. That is like the quote I want to leave you with. Um, but yeah, so I'm just so thankful and happy and um, excited that I was able to share this talk with the people who are here now. And you can call me, that's the call me sign. Call me, hit me up, um, email me, uh, message me on Instagram if you want to ask me any questions. If I have like maybe one now, I could answer it before Jenny comes in and starts presenting. My name's Jenny Reed. Um, I'm a resident at Baltimore Clayworks. This is my first year here. So I moved here um, in August. I had just graduated from Indiana University Bloomington with um, my master's in fine arts. Um, and so, yeah, I was really fortunate. I got the residency and um, I was really excited about it and moving uh, during a pandemic is pretty crazy, but um, it's been a good landing place for me. It's been like a good community to become part of. And um, I'm really enjoying just like kind of experimenting with a few new things and then also working through like similar ideas I've been working on for a few years. And so I'm predominantly a ceramic based assemblage sculptor. Um, I use a variety of different materials. This is a pretty good example of what my typical work looks like. Um, I'm really into ceramics. Um, most recently, I've been really interested in working with fiber and ceramic and figuring out how to combine those. Um, specifically tapestry, I like tapestries a lot. And um, also some paper making and collage and some painting and kind of whatever else starts getting thrown in. So all of my work to me has like these common ideas sort of going on behind them. Um, one is this idea of how I make things like I'm so interested in hands on processes, um, which I think is why ceramics is such a big pool for me. Um, and I really want that idea of the act of creation to be able to be shown in the end product of my work. I want it to be like very obvious that it was handmade and um, that you can kind of see the time that went into that creation. 
So along with that time is like a big part. I think of ceramics as like this material that's having a record and it's kind of like an archive of history for humans. Um, and also it becomes an archive in terms of how I created the piece. I want some of that to be really present in the end product. Um, and then the other part of my work that I see as a pretty prevalent theme is domesticity. So a lot of the work that I create is based on spaces and objects from the home setting. And typically it's from my like personal home. Um, and so those things kind of weave and intertwine to create all of my work. So much of my work is based on the idea of these mundane moments that are happening in the home and trying to create a piece of art that's sort of commemorating them or like memorializing those moments. So it can be moments that sort of, to me, I think of them as just kind of like passing by almost unnoticed, but um, by creating a piece of work on about them, I'm like showing their significance or I'm making them significant basically. So they're like commemorative uh, pieces. And I'm really into this like wonky aesthetic. I think it kind of adds interest to the work and also a sense of humor. Um, so for me, like personally, I think I kind of ebb and flow between seeing like a pointlessness in some things, um, but then also like a significance and trying to find some sort of way to like appreciate when things seem pointless. So um, like, for example, this was just like preparing for a meal and having like all the items together. Um, and something about when this happened, like in that moment, just compositionally was really interesting to me. And it just made me like see it different and like have a different appreciation for it. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to share. I play a lot with like abstraction too. Um, so like this piece is on the wall and it's like created so it looks foreshortened. Um, so I'm also kind of playing with like the ideas of still lives and paintings. Um, all of it is kind of just this absurdist humor that's sort of like, I don't know, poking at that pointlessness sort of stuff. Um, more recently, since I've been at Clayworks, I've been spending a lot of time doing smaller experiments. So based on that previous work, um, most of those pieces are large and can take quite a while. And um, sometimes mentally, I feel like I'm kind of all over the place. Like I have a lot of different things I want to explore. So I have started making some smaller works so that I get an option to do that. Um, this piece is a joke cup. So um, it's a cup and it can't stand up on its own. It comes off of that base. And basically the interior part is like a tube with a hole in the bottom. I should have a diagram with me, but um, basically if you fill it up too high, the water is gonna shoot out from the bottom. There's like a little hole into it. So um, this was like an ancient Greek cup. Um, they were called gluttony cups. And so I was making my own um, iteration of that. And it was a fun experiment for me because actually it was like pretty difficult to build. <laughs> um, and so also this is glazed with maiolica, which um, I'm kind of playing around with. It's just like a white base glaze and then you add colorants over top of it that become glossy. Um, it's a very like a painterly way to work. Um, and I'm sort of just exploring that a little bit too. Typically with my work, I use glaze, but then I also use paint in other ways to finish the surface. It kind of just depends on what the piece needs and how particular I'm gonna be. Um, so trying to create more functional work that uh, has glaze is definitely a fun new challenge for me. These are some pieces I have right now in Baltimore Clayworks online shop. So we did a artist fundraiser basically where we did it, we're doing a cup sale right now. And these are also a fun way for me to sort of play around. Um, although I've done ceramics since I was like a kid, I really started from the sculpture end and I never got 
very involved in making pottery. And I think part of the reason was because I felt like often I see potters who have this like very specific aesthetic and style. And I just could never figure out what it would be that I could make that would make my pots look like mine. Um, and I think this was like a good exercise for me not to worry about that so much. It's like, they're all one of a kind pieces. Um, they're all a little weird and like, although they are functional, that really wasn't the first thing I was interested in um, pursuing with the work. It really is about the aesthetics and what they look like and sort of playing with that form. Those are a few other examples. The last work that's in the shop that I'm gonna show, these are just a few examples of a days of a week series that I've been making. So um, I'm making a cup for each day of the week. And this was another way that I kind of allowed myself to explore a big range of how things could look. Um, and I'm pretty excited about it. I think that every day has like a certain feeling. And that's what I was thinking about how, um, like, so on the left is um, the Monday cup. And I think of Mondays as just like, so hard to get out of bed and just kind of like drags along. Um, and so like, I made these like droopy eyes and then like the cup on the right is Tuesday. And for Tuesday, for me, it's usually the day I'm like trying to get as much done as I can. And I'm like, okay, it's the start of the week. And like, I have new motivation. Um, so, you know, some of that symbolism is more obvious or more elusive in each piece, but um, it's been really fun for me to like try to explore each of those in a different piece of work. And one thing I've noticed with this, because I was thinking about how I think that each day of the week has like a certain feeling that I can kind of talk about and explain to other people. And I feel like it's something we can like relate on and be like, oh yeah, like, I don't know. And there's so many um, terms like, oh, it's the case of the Mondays or it's like TGIF. And there's like this kind of commonality understanding. And so I really like that idea that even if you don't know exactly what someone else means, you're kind of having this like relation to them. But at the same time, I was thinking about how um, there's sort of like a gimmick to that. And I think part of what we think of with how we think a certain day of the week feels, we have been like conditioned to feel that way um, from like very abstract like propaganda. And so um, it's just been kind of an interesting exercise for me. I think it's kind of related to consumerism in a particular way. And so each day of the week cup is like priced a particular way, um, kind of as a joke, like how much money would you spend to be reminded of what a Monday feels like um, or how much is like a Saturday worth. Um, so I'm just kind of like playing with those ideas too. And I'm pretty excited about that. Last image I'm gonna share, this is from the pickle jar series. So I've talked a little bit just about how um, helpful it's been to be opening to experimenting and trying to work through these different series. Um, so one series I've been working on for about over a year has been what I call the pickle jar series. So it started off because um, pickles are something I always have in my fridge. And there's something I think they're kind of gross, but also, um, I don't know, pretty easy just to throw like whatever feelings on. Like, I don't think anyone has super intense feelings about pickles. Um, I'm the bread and butter type fan. And where I was living, those came in this jar that had like a lilac top and then like the lime green, like there's something so gross and pretty about it to me. And so that's what first made me make one. And then as I kept making them, they just kept getting wackier and wackier. And um, now I'm making them where like, I have one that's like a pickle jar of like all these pickles that are in jail. And it's becoming more of like a commentary on like whatever I'm thinking. Um, 
So I'm really excited about that. And I'm going to, um, the entire series of that is going to make its debut um, this summer. I'm going to have a solo show at Clayworks in July. So I just wanted to plug that in. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much what I had to say. Um, does anyone have any questions or 